Autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia, also known as autonomic hyperreflexia, is a massive, uncompensated cardiovascular reaction by the sympathetic nervous system in patients with a spinal injury at T6 or higher. The higher the level of the spinal cord injury, the greater the risk. Not all patients with spinal injury at T6 or higher will have autonomic dysreflexia, but those who develop it will have it occur for the first time within a year after their injury, when reflexes have recovered. Autonomic dysreflexia is caused by a noxious stimulus to the nervous system below the level of spinal cord injury, with bladder distension being the most common cause, in about 85% of all cases. Bladder distension can be caused by urinary retention and catheter blockage such as a kink or a clot in the Foley tubing. Other causes that may irritate the bladder include UTI, urinary spasms, and kidney stones. Bowel impaction and constipation are the next common cause for autonomic dysreflexia. Other causes that can cause irritation below the level of injury include skin lesions, fractures or dislocations in the lower parts of the body, and pregnancy. When the patient's body perceives a stimulus, such as a full bladder, it activates the sympathetic nervous system which is the system responsible for fight-or-flight response. The SNS response causes vasoconstriction and elevated blood pressure. In a normal autonomic system, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and tries to slow down the heart rate and cause vasodilation to lower the blood pressure. However, in autonomic dysreflexia, this compensatory response cannot travel down the spinal cord because of the site of injury blocking the signals. As a result, there is vasodilation and bradycardia above the site of injury and vasoconstriction below the site of injury with diffuse hypertension. Blood pressure is considered elevated if the systolic blood pressure is more than 150 millimeters of mercury or more than 40 millimeters of mercury above baseline levels. Because of vasodilation above the site of injury, it causes sudden, severe, and throbbing headache, which is the usually the first symptom, and there is also facial flushing due to vasodilation. That's above the site of injury, and below the site of injury, vasoconstriction causes pale, cold skin, and sweating in the lower part of the body. If a patient with a history of spinal cord injury at T6 or above presents with severe headache and elevated blood pressure, it is highly suggestive of autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia requires immediate treatment because the combination of cerebral vasodilation and high blood pressure put patients at high risk for hemorrhagic stroke. Fortunately, most episodes of autonomic dysreflexia resolve quickly once the stimulus is removed. The immediate first step should be sitting the patient upright, with their legs dangling and removing any tight clothing or constrictive devices. These are quick and easy steps to help lower blood pressure as well as eliminating possible triggering stimuli. The next immediate step is to identify and remove the triggering stimulus. Check for bladder distension as this is the most common cause. Place a Foley catheter for urinary retention, or if a patient already has a Foley, check for obstructions such as kinks, clots blocking the flow, or malpositioning. If the stimulus cannot be identified or initial maneuvers do not improve BP, emergency antihypertensive medications should be initiated. Nitroglycerin 2% paste is recommended as initial emergency treatment by placing the paste on the skin above the level of the spinal cord injury. Do not give nitroglycerin if the patient has taken sildenafil or tadalafil within the last 24 hours due to potential for severe hypotension. Other antihypertensive include nifedipine, IV hydralazine, and IV labetalol in the hospital setting. Blood pressure should be monitored closely to evaluate effectiveness of treatment and or rebound hypotension from treatment.